Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to uh, Info's first um, Global Investment Strategy Review events. Um, this is Wallace. Um, nice meeting all of you. Um, uh, in uh, sales side analyst, also um, Alibaba part of the team as well. Um, today is our pleasure to invite all of you to join our event today. Uh, just a little background about Inbox. Um, I'm one of the co-founder, together with a uh, very low profile, successful software entrepreneur, Richard. So we are long-term classmates for 20 years, and uh, thanks for all his contribution and patience on all my crazy ideas. So what's the Inbox? We, uh, we aim to empower all the professional investors. Okay, we aim to provide both fundamental and quantitative research tools and data points to empower your smart decision making in the investment process. So there will be more product development and service launch going forward. Um, we hope to launch it somewhere in 2018, but we do welcome all your uh, ideas and we hopefully we can invite all of you to rejoin more marketing events uh, in the next you know, couple of weeks and months. And uh, actually next week, we potentially will, will launch another event to talk about the new iPhone, uh, actually next Friday, uh, with another batch of uh, young talent in Hong Kong. Anyway, so one of the things which may lead us to quite different from other startups in Hong Kong is, we both love the place where we grew up, and we graduate. We both graduate from the Hong Kong University of Hong Kong. And obviously we have some honorable alumni from Cambridge University as well, and the the students. We want to create value in a society. And that's why uh, I think so far all our full-time employees actually have been working as an internship with us for more than 15 months already. And we have hired, as of now, more than 50, five zero. Um, university students in Hong Kong from at least six different universities. Um, we're going to start our training program and we provide them career opportunities as well as we're going to build platform for them to build a profile for their aspiration and career in the long term. So there are more things for us to do it and hopefully all our colleagues can manage uh, all the you know, crazy ideas and working pressure that I've done enforced to them so far. By the way, I keep it short. Um, uh, before I start to introduce uh, the young talent today, uh, to make sure uh, what's happening is today is an event for us to review what we have done in our investment process in the US defense stock strategies. So we are happy to share more what we have been doing in terms of the, our analysis and investment review, but this is not a pitch on any kind of like buy and sell on any securities. We're not asking you to raise funding. So hopefully it's clear. And this is an event we are uh, online and we have more participants online and we're recording now already. So if you are not happy about the sub setup, please let me know. And, uh, and finally, I, we have to uh, introduce two uh, fantastic um, outstanding students who graduated from the Chinese University of Hong Kong and graduated from our um, sort of um, the first batch of the employee program, part time employee program uh, that is Ms. Stephanie Kloon and also um, Ms. Nelson Jeff. So, there, uh, I better let the young talent to introduce themselves out and keep talking. <laughs> Everybody know who I am, perhaps. So, thank you, uh, Stephanie and Nelson. Please, I'll pass back to you. Uh, Hey, can anybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, great. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's event. So, today I'm going to share uh, some of our story, a story about some our how to form or structure our portfolio regarding uh, the U.S. defense sector, uh, together with a pretty lady, Stephanie. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, as I all know about war horn, uh, for soldiers, they usually play the war horns before the war actually breaks out. And we believe that there are plenty of investment opportunities 
on the rising global geopolitical risk. So um, let's see how it works. So when we usually talk about you know, the recent trends of a military defense conflicts, I think everybody would say it's about North Korea, right? So North Korea has actually launched uh, one ICBM missile testing in last July, and only by last week, they shot five missiles. Four is uh, short-range uh, ballistic missiles, and one more is a medium-range ballistic missile, which shoot across Japan. And President Donald Trump is very aggressive as well. He responded by his uh, fire and fury speech towards North Korea. So uh, it seems to all of us that it's very likely that North Korea is going to launch more and more missile testing in the near future. So uh, in this presentation, our question is definitely welcome, and you can just uh, feel free to raise your hand during uh, the presentation, and uh, my colleagues will uh, uh, pass the microphone to you guys, and yeah, just feel, feel free to ask any question if you want. But before that, I would like to raise the first question. Uh, so I would like to ask how many times actually uh, did North Korea conduct its missile testing only in 2017. Uh, anyone want to have a try? Ten times. Ten times. Uh, it's a close guess, but it's more than that. Anyone? The most they've ever done. Yeah, it's the most. But would you like to try or tell the actual number? Or? Right. Oh no, it's too much. Okay. Well, otherwise, the world would be in chaos, right? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, actually, um, North Korea has launched five missile testing last year. But for this year, it's about 14 times. And the sum of number of times of testing only in last year and this year has already exceeded the total number of testing in past 30 years. So we can imagine how uh, aggressive Korea and North Korea is carrying out its moves in missile testing, especially in developing the nuclear weapons. So I think the world is looking for an answer of a critical question. The war be actually breaks out. So in our point of view, we definitely uh, we are against war, but we believe that we should not hinder any investment opportunities on the rising geopolitical risk. So today we are going to talk about uh, uh, we, we want to show you that the global geopolitical risk is actually rising, and many countries have already responded by raising their defense budget. And uh, we choose to target the U.S. market simply because we saw a significant or a huge increase in the defense budget, and we also see a very rigid demand for U.S. weapons in terms of international sales, in terms of its exports. And among those products, we believe that the aircraft the missiles and the radar will be the key goal driver for U.S. spending in terms of procurement, in terms of purchase. And uh, we believe that our core holding company, Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, uh, they are the main suppliers and contractors of these uh, products. So we believe that uh, these companies will generate an outperforming result compared to its peers. And finally, we're going to sh um, show to you, you, you guys that uh, we actually have a successful story, and uh, we will show you more details about our portfolio return. So the first thing I want to share about is uh, the global geopolitical risk is actually rising. Uh, we can definitely see from the benchmark index that uh, no matter the magnitude or the frequency of those military events, has actually become more frequent and the potential impact is getting more bigger. And more importantly, uh, this trend is not a, a not, it's not a trend that limited to a regional level. It's more a global phenomenon. We see that like for example last year Turkey has its military conflicts. And later on North Korea uh, has pushed up its uh, testing in nuclear weapons in long-range uh, ballistic missiles over these two years. And the impact is very, very large. It nearly uh, touched the nerve of all countries in the South China Sea. 
So definitely, it means that a rise in geopolitical risk in the world, uh, the countries have to prepare or allocate more resources uh, in terms of uh, in their defense budget. So talking about defense budget, I believe that it's important to look at the top 10 countries with the largest defense budget because they simply account for almost two-thirds of total defense spending in the world. So obviously, uh, I don't have to ask questions. The number one would be US, and it is followed by China. And for the rest of the countries, it includes um, some, for example, European countries, like Germany, like France. Um, it also includes countries near the Pacific Oceans, like South Korea, like Japan. And it also includes some new uh, joiners, for example, those in uh, Southeast Asia, or maybe in the Middle East country like Saudi Arabia or India. So actually for these 10 companies, we see that eight out of 10 countries have recorded a positive growth in the defense budget in last year. And even for, for example, for budget country like Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia actually engaged in the new one trillion weapon purchase agreement with US in this year. So we see that every country is uh, very willing to spend their resources or to spend their money in allocating more resources in, to protect the national defense or to buy more national defense system. I think it's better for us to look in more detail by looking at some uh, defense budget of some uh, particular countries. Let's say, for example, uh, when we look at the Japan defense budget, oh, yeah, uh, I think before I talk about you know, the Japan defense budget, uh, I have to tell you why we choose the US market. We believe that um, there is two reasons. First, uh, US is actually the biggest uh, weapon sellers in the world, and main buyers mainly consist of uh, those uh, allies from uh, US. For example, uh, Saudi Arabia, which is under NATO agreement, or maybe Japan under the security treaty. And US policy is generally considered to have a very, uh, to provide very high quality weapons. And um, we believe that under a greater risk exposure, greater uh, geopolitical risk exposure of uh, the allies, uh, for example, Japan against North Korea, Saudi Arabia against ISIS. We believe that uh, the demand for U.S. weapon in terms of international sales uh, would remain strong in the near future. So, yeah, I can further illustrate this uh, principle by looking at some specific budget in some countries. For example, when I when we talk about the U.S. defense budget, we actually see a turnaround in, de in defense budget since 2014, and uh, Japan actually has a very heavy reliance in, uh, for U.S. weapons, and you, the spending on U.S. weapons actually accounts for almost 9% of total cost or total spending of U.S. defense budget. So when we look at the weapon list of Japan uh, for U.S. weapons, uh, it's not a surprise to see that the U.S. has a strengthened in the military force uh, in terms of Navy, an army by buying more fighter aircraft, like for example, F-35, and also anti-missile defense system like PAC-3, in which we'll introduce further later. And the main supplier of these products is exactly Dr. Martin, Raytheon, and NLC. So when we look at, for example, the defense budget of South Korea, the trend is even more serious or more straightforward we see that uh, the defense budget actually grew more linearly for South Korea since 2010. And in order to cope with you know, the threats from North Korea, uh, South Korea actually pl also planned to deploy their weapons or deploy their spending in strengthening their forces in Navy and also Army. So uh, when we see from the weapon list, yeah, it, we see that actually uh, South Korea has also uh, delivery is planned in terms of buying uh, fighter aircraft and also anti-missile system. 
And this main supplier for these uh, key weapons is also Lockheed Martin, Dravian, LOC, etc. And finally, uh, one more point to highlight that uh, uh, we know that South Korea is going to uh, deploy its attack uh, launchers against uh, the threat from North Korea. And we, uh, we believe that uh, South Korea will continue its plan in deploying launcher and interceptor, and we believe that this uh, delivery plan will continue in the near future. So Stephanie, would you like to share a little bit more about U.S. defense budget? Of course. So I would like to share about the U.S. defense budget. And you can see that from the previous years, we have been in 2017, and actually the U.S. defense budget is not that stable. And we can see a negative growth rate in 2015, and also we can expect a growth rate on say 4% in 2016. But it's totally different in 2018 under uh, Trump's administration. And we can see that uh, there are about 9% increase in the um, US defense project this year. And also the more surprising effect is that we can see uh, the Congress request an even more higher defense project growth rate uh, compared to the last year. And also uh, we can see uh, there may be a strong consensus for Trump and also the Congress to uh, have a higher growth rate in the defense, US defense project. So you may wonder that why there will be a sudden sharp increase in, uh, in the U.S. defense project in 2018. And we have uh, think that our uh, driver of the U.S. defense project maybe uh, is, diff is slightly different from the conventional uh, view. And most people may think that if there is an outbreak of war, and then it uh, may definitely increase the uh, defense project as we need to allocate more resources to the defense project to increase the uh, country or military forces. But we do, uh, I, on the other hand, if there is no war and so that the government is allowed uh, to increase the defense project and also they make more resources maybe allocated to others, uh, other places or settlements. But uh, we think that it may not be true or it may not uh, be um, totally correct as we think that the risk of the uh, geopolitical the U.S. defense project growth rate. And we can see if there is an increase in the geopolitical risk, and maybe uh, the government or the uh, people who think uh, there will be a war in the future, and so that they will advise their defense project to uh, tackle this problem and also to get the country be prepared for this uh, outbreak of war. So uh, they may increase the procurement or even the R&D and training to increase the military force. So we can see uh, in 2018, the defense project breakdown, we can see there is a consistent growth rate for uh, the procurement, these uh, items. And we can also uh, know that uh, there is a consistent growth for the uh, procurement, as, uh, when the, especially in this year when the defense project is growing. And the exact amount of the procurement in, of the total defense project actually increased for 10%. So uh, it may uh, make a conclusion that maybe the procurement actually benefits those companies producing those uh, military weapons and also this defense system. So looking, at, looking more deep in the procurement breakdown, we can see the government actually are divided into six uh, sectors or segments, including the aeronautics, missiles, marine, radar, and space system, and also the others. And for the all the uh, segments, we can see a positive growth rate uh, in those uh, procurement breakdown. So definitely, it would be better for a lot of companies in producing those uh, uh, military weapons. And also, we can see the aeronautics uh, take the largest rating among those segments, and it also has a consistent growth rate because the government is trying to meet the uh, energy target like uh, the uh, aircraft target uh, kept in the uh, U.S. Uh, government. And also for the missiles, maybe the increasing demand for the international sales to tackle the North Korea threat will be one of the drivers for this too. And for the marine sectors, actually it has a special characteristic that uh, once they sign the contract with the manufacturer, actually the manufacturer can enjoy a stable growth rate from this strong position 
um, cycle of those uh, aircraft carriers. And also for the radar, actually, because uh, the country or the uh, US government is trying to uh, increase or enhance the um, technological uh, science of the those weapons to detect uh, those uh, the military action from the other countries. And so talking about uh, all those uh, increasing trends for the military uh, defense project or even the procurement, so who will be the beneficial player in or company in those rising trends? We can for all that we have uh, for all the US defense ETF and there are five uh, main defense stock uh, we have for all according to the market market capitalization and these five companies account for about 40% of the 40 largest defense stock. So we can see those uh, manufacturers uh, will be benefited the most in those uh, increasing trend of the defense project. And for those uh, companies, they actually have different competitive edge in uh, the defense sector. For example, uh, the Rocky Mountain actually is specialized in protecting the airport or the missiles and also the uh, space system. And for the Raytheon, they have famous for their missiles and also the mission system, even the radar. And I also would like to highlight the HII, which is the only producer and manufacturer of the aircraft carrier. And these are the uh, weapons systems uh, acquired in 2015 requested by the Trump administration. And I also highlight the F-35, which uh, is the main focus uh, for the government or the army. So the main manufacturer of the F-35 is, is the rocket margin, and also uh, we can see there is a higher net margin with the, about 40%. So actually, rocket margin can earn a lot from producing this, uh, this type of aircraft fighter. And we can see that the outstanding commitments in the coming years, and there are lots of us. Uh, it can secure uh, rocket margin for a stable revenue growth. And also for the other segment, which is the missiles, and also you must be I heard about the TED and also PAC3, which are using as a defense system for the North Korea um, missiles testing. So what is the TED? And actually, the contractor of the, uh, the TED is uh, the Rocky Martin and also the Raytheon and Fordham. And it actually is targeting to tackle or targeting on a short and medium range for the state missiles to um, intercept those missiles and to protect the countries. And the successful rate for this uh, weapon or defense system is very high. It, since 2005, we have 100 successful rate in testing. So no matter for the US and also the uh, South Korea, it will uh, deploy tech as a uh, defense system to uh, tackle or to fight against with the North Korea. So for the other missile system is the PAC-3. And the main contractor or the manufacturer are also the North Mountain and also the Radio. And it is slightly different with the TED because it's target and a shorter range of ballistic missiles and also uh, maybe some fighter aircraft. And why this PAC-3 is so famous? Because it is the first missile that can successfully uh, intercept the missiles from the other country so more and more countries will use PAC-3 as the basic uh, defense system to protect or to increase the military force. So about the marine, and we can see uh, the US government actually is trying to also decide to uh, build an other aircraft carrier and to from contractor with the HII. And we can see uh, GE and HII actually are the prime contractor for the government uh, in terms of the marine product. And for the space, it's actually target and positioning or detecting some uh, missiles defense uh, problems. And the main contractor would be the Lockheed Martin and also others uh, defense stock. So I will now pass to Nelson to talk about why we would like to invest in those uh, products. Okay, so uh, so far, I mean, based on our analysis so far, uh, we believe that we basically outline our investment strategy. We want to buy the biggest uh, defense company in the U.S. 
We want to buy the company which is most beneficial from the rise in U.S. defense budget, as well as a great uh, demand in terms for a new, uh, international sales of U.S. weapons. So I believe it's uh, another exciting time for us to share our portfolio on how uh, we structure our portfolio or what, what's the performance of our portfolios. So uh, overall, I believe that you know, the whole defense sector is actually has a very defensive nature. And it means that the performance of this stock actually have a very low correlation with market performance. So, in further selecting our criteria in choosing our target companies, uh, we also evaluate uh, the source of revenue to see whether it can provide uh, stable cash flow. Uh, and we believe that it is mainly driven by a well diversified product mix in company business. We will also like to evaluate its valuation as well as any signaling effects from share repurchase for any particular company. So let's take a look at this one by one. Uh, we actually start our project in June, and uh, uh, so so far it lasts until almost for three months, right? So during our planning stage in the first month in June, uh, we monitored closely regarding the performance of the whole market. Uh, the iShares Defense ETF mentioned by Stephanie just now, which served as an industry proxy and also individual stocks. And our timing of purchase is actually uh, like event driven type. For example, when we see, uh, we initiate our first, uh, we do our first buy one day before the Congress actually passed the Trump administration. Because we simply believe that it's very likely for the Congress uh, to pass this uh, solution, resolution. Uh, because given a very large or increasing geopolitical risk, and soon after, um, North Korea has launched its ICBM testing in early July. Uh, we try to make it as a second buy in a few days later because we believe that those uh, Pacific countries like South Korea, like Japan, they're very likely to deploy uh, more resources on uh, the defense system. And that's why North South Korea is now planning to uh, set up more fat launchers or fat interceptors uh, in August. And then the rest becomes the history. We found that uh, actually uh, for uh, the return uh, performance, we found that the defense ETF actually outperformed the S&P 500, which indicates that uh, the performance of the industry actually outperformed the markets. We also found that our core holding companies like Lockheed Martin, like Raytheon, shown in the uh, orange and blue lines, they have uh, outperformed the whole uh, sector performance as well. And we believe that it is mainly driven by the large demand of their core products, which means first, number one, F-35, number two, the tech results, and number three, the PC3 system. And we can also see that the volatility of these stocks is actually uh, not that high, which again suggests a very defensive nature of our portfolio. And in terms of, uh, capital allocation. Uh, again, we put, uh, we, allocate, we try to allocate more uh, capital or resources in our favorite choice, which is Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, which separately account for around like 20% each in terms of uh, weight. And you can see that we didn't actually uh, increase our holding of Lockheed Martin and Raytheon in the second buy, because we still uh, believe that uh, there may be a potential correction in terms of stock price because when we read the news in uh, late July, uh, the North Korea government seems to have uh, shown the intention to reduce the tension with US. But later on, uh, we found that North Korea continued to carry out its uh, missile testing system in, in, uh, in August. And that's why in our proposed uh, threat buy, we still want to increase our holding in the Lockheed Martin. And, and we are very proud here to present to you guys that uh, we, as of yesterday, we achieved a very successful and outperforming portfolio, and which, uh, in terms of our return on invested capital, uh, is exceed almost seven percent, and for return on capital, is exceed around it, we achieve uh, more than five percent of return. So we believe that it's a uh, kind of a 
safe and outperforming strategy during the summer. Uh, yeah. So I would also like to further illustrate the concept of a defensive portfolio using Bayer. We can see that uh, for uh, the industry Bayer, it has a uh, for industry it has a Bayer of more than one, and it suggests that uh, the whole sector, the whole U.S. defense sector, is actually less sensitive to systematic risk of the whole market. We also found that uh, for the orange line and the yellow line, which represent the beta of Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, it, they even have a they have an even lower beta compared to the industry average. Uh, we believe that it is their less their low sensitivity to systematic risk is mainly because that the source of revenue is largely locked in uh, by the long term contract with government. That means whether or not the market is doing well or doing so bad, uh, they can still have a steady revenue source, steady revenue inflow from uh, in which the, the major customer will be the US government. So maybe let's take a deeper look to see uh, uh, what actually uh, is our favorite choice. Uh, we started Lockheed Martin. And uh, Lockheed Martin actually has a very profound history. It started in the early 20th centuries. And currently, its market capitalization has already reached almost $90 billion, which satisfies our, our investment strategy in picking up big companies. And recently, the company is actively achieving growth by doing M&A or disposal. For example, uh, in 2015, the company has disposed its information system business. So that the company can focus more on its competitive edge. And just last year, the company has acquired a top helicopter manufacturer in the US to further expand its uh, rotary segment portfolio. When we look at uh, the key management from Lockheed Martin, uh, we found that actually those management are very experienced in uh, Navy or Air Force. And they also have a very close relationship with the government. Which, suggest, which suggested that um, the management really knows well about the security need in national level. So this favors them uh, to structure the bid when, uh, when they submit uh, the proposal to the government. And currently, Lockheed Martin accounts for the largest contractor in the US, and around 20% of the contracts uh, in US government belongs to Lockheed Martin. Uh, the principal business of Lockheed Martin can basically define the four types. They made aircraft, they made missiles, they made helicopters, and they made space systems. So uh, we see that uh, the key goal driver of US procurement, like the F-35, uh, the set missiles, and also PC-3, Lockheed Martin is the major supplier of these uh, star products. So uh, for aeronautics salmon, it actually accounts for the greatest uh, portion uh, of this product mix. And US government remains as the biggest customer, which accounts for almost over 70% of total mix sales. And we have identified positive growth driver in all segments. Let's say, for example, aero for aeronautics salmon. Uh, we see that this segment can enjoy from a steady growth simply by reaching the inventory target of uh, F-35 production of uh, 1,450 1, piece by 2020. And for a missile system, we believe that it will mainly driven by a stronger demand in for international sales because we see that many oceanic countries, many uh, coastal countries, they are deploying more and more anti-missile system from US. So uh, we, be we believe that in the near future for rotary segment, it will be mainly driven by uh, the quality enhancement because the company has just acquired the top manufacturer in the, of a helicopter. And for space system, we also spot a very, uh, we also spot a double digit growth in space system. But we believe that uh, uh, explore is mainly driven by basic facts. Uh, we also see a very robust earning growth for Lockheed Martin. And one thing I would also like to highlight is uh, for the margin, you may think that there may be a decrease in margin, gross, either gross margin or net margin um, uh, for our forecast compared to 2016. But actually, we believe that 
the high margin in 2016 is mainly attributable to the income or one-off gain from this continued operation as the company has just exposed its uh, information system business, as I mentioned uh, just now. And I mean, um, the leverage, the interest coverage ratio, and the liquidity are, are quite healthy, and the company can definitely use its products as flash the assets when they demand more cash. So it's actually provide a very secure source of cash flow for the company. Um, the current stock price of uh, Lockheed Martin is uh, 306 US dollar, trading at around 22 times B. And we mainly use ETF valuation to evaluate this company. And we try to identify the company, I mean, the price of the company in three scenarios the best case scenario, the base case, and the first case. Uh, the base case mainly outlined that we allow feel that uh, the defense budget will increase uh, without an outbreak of war. And we try to incorporate some more variables. For example, uh, what about a potential surprise from a guidance announcement? Or what about there may be some variation in terms of ad hoc demand driven by US government and other uh, countries where the political risk is rising. So uh, I believe that the total shareholder return is quite promising. Uh, there are three sources of uh, return in terms of the uh, stock price increase, in terms of dividend, in terms of uh, share of purchase. So even in the worst case scenario, we believe that uh, like this, uh, we can still achieve a positive return uh, for this company. Uh, we also try to refer to uh, some guidance uh, announcement to evaluate or identify the timing of investment. For example, typically we found that the company usually have a greater revision of, on company guidance, particularly in the second and third quarter. So this may suggest a potential stock price catalyst in the summer. And also when we compare uh, the actual performance with the guidance performance, it seems that the locking market management is quite conservative in setting up the guidance, uh, we can see that the actual results are usually above uh, guidance for around 2 to 3 percent. So we believe that uh, uh, the potential timing for early results announcement could indicate another stock price catalyst uh, for us to, to decide whether to buy this uh, company. And finally, last thing for Lockheed Martin, we believe uh, we, we also proved to have a very close relationship between uh, the purchase price and the average price. We can see that from the scattered diagram on the left-hand side, uh, the repurchase price actually is very close to the average price of a particular quarter. And we believe that the, mar the market actually uh, perceives the signal from management as a very, uh, to be very reliable for indicating the underlying stock price. So we also try to use this uh, methodology to estimate the price in the future. And we also set up three scenarios based on the maximum repurchase price, the average repurchase price, and also the minimum price. And based on our estimation of the average price, uh, the implied 2Q1, uh, 2Q1H price will be around $330. Uh, uh, I think it's a, it is a close estimate to our DCF valuation. And it further generates a buy signal for us because you know, the current price of this company is just three hundred and six dollar, uh, and yeah, def it definitely is a is a good choice for us to choose this company. So, Stephanie, any comments on Ravian? So, about Ravian, another core holding for us uh, in our investments, and it also has the long history, which was founded in nineteen twenty two, and it has a long history in producing the radar or, or, and also the missile system which also strengthen his leadership position in this uh, sector. And also, Raytheon actually has some unique uh, features in their key management executive. We can see many executives, such as the independent director or even the uh, previous uh, chairman and CEO, uh, also play an important role in the uh, Department of Defense or in the other uh, defense departments. So actually, some of them are even the uh, previous uh, members in the defense uh, policy. So they may know, they may understand uh, the 
policy drum check procedures and also understand the current uh, situation in uh, the uh, de Department of Defense in drum check uh, policy. So uh, those may train from this region in uh, these markets to have an independent interdependent relationship with the government so as to strengthen his leadership role in uh, this industry to have like the bargaining power of the government and also to maybe ensure that uh, the growth rate of the sales revenue as they can uh, maybe uh, strive for their try for their main contractor in their uh, leadership role in like the missiles or in the radar system market. And for the radio and it's different with the Rocky Mountain and they have five uh, segments uh, which are the integrated defense system which produce like some greater solutions and also the air defense uh, system. And for the intelligence information and services, it provides some intelligence and surveillance and also the mission support uh, for solutions to the government. And for the design system, it is that the PAC3 will be the uh, key product of radio too. And for the space and airborne system, and it mainly produces some uh, radar or some uh, sensor for the aircraft and also for the space system. And for the force point, it actually is a joint venture of radio with the other department to enter in the cyber security market. And actually, um, radio has a very diversified product mix, which, uh, which attracts us to put our money or invest in this stock. And we can see uh, Apart from the force point, uh, this new segment and the other uh, traditional force uh, segment has a uh, consistent, consistent uh, product max uh, of the total revenue. And we can see the missile system actually take the largest portion of the uh, our revenue or the product max of radio. And also, the government is the major uh, customer of radio in terms of the, like the military sales. Uh, to the other countries or even for the internal use. So it can ensure that um, radio will have to secure sales growth rate in the latest years. And for the next sales, we can see uh, the growth rate of the those department are actually enjoy positive growth rate. And also uh, the main driver are relatively are related to the uh, US defense project as the defense project are mainly focused on like to increase or enhance the weapon system and the defense system. So the radar or even some sensors uh, will be uh, enjoying value growth rate uh, with the enhancement of those uh, weapon system. And also, you can also uh, support our earning growth uh, in the coming years, which we can definitely enjoy a positive growth rate in those uh, segments. And also with the net margin, uh, we can see a, a, a slightly increase for uh, the net margin, so we can enjoy a lot. And also for the other, like the leverage and the liquidity, the company actually have a healthy liquidity um, status. Uh, for the valuation part, and radio is trading, uh, the close price of radio uh, is 182. Uh, price and trading at about 22 times uh, most key multiple. So we can see it's very attractive for us to invest in this stock. And even for, uh, we have also the best case, best case, and also worst case. And even in the worst case, we also have a, a, a total return about 25%, which are uh, also consolidating uh, our confidence in investing in this safety and also attractive uh, stock. And for the guidance, actually, Raytheon has the same features as Rocky Mountain. And we can see the company uh, may have a greater end year guidance revision in second quarter and also third quarter. So it also can give rise to the stock price and catalyst. And also we can see the actual to the guidance uh, comparison. We can see the actual, uh, the actual numbers are actually above the uh, guidance, so it also can maybe give rise to the stock price catalyst during the announcement of the uh, uh, quarterly figures. And for the stock repurchase, and also it uh, indicates indicate a favorable signal for all of us. Uh, as we can see in three uh, scenarios, and also uh, we can predict in 2018, this average price will be $213, which is closely 
close uh, close to our DCF value and also to uh, indicate a possible uh, positive price signal on this stock as the current stock price is only uh, 152 now. So talking about two uh, stocks that we have uh, invested in and also we would like to uh, share about some risks we have considered. So in the US market and maybe it's very famous or it's very useful for the branch I'm reading in the coming of 2017 September. So would it be a larger risk for us to invest in this stock? And we don't think uh, it would be uh, great difficulties or it will uh, drive our case into the worst case because actually we can see in the previous slide we can also see the beta of those stock actually relatively high compared to the market. So uh, even maybe the unwind branch it may draw down the stock price, but it may have a slightly uh, impact on those radio and also rocky the stock. And for the another investment risk is that impeachment of the US president. Because uh, many, people, many people are complaining that Trump is not doing well in his position. But once uh, there will be an impeachment and also training in the president, it may operate the new president policy maybe is totally different to Trump's. So it may also address the defense project. But we think that um, in the other like it economically and actually Trump can can give a good or a not bad uh, economic figures. So uh, and also with the complicated procedures in the impeachment of the US president, it's not likely to it's not likely to happen and also the risk or the uh, impact to us actually is not that high. So talking about uh, the investment strategies, we also consider when would be the best time uh, for us to accept this uh, portfolio. So we have basically defined into two uh, perspectives. The one is uh, the element or the factor that is related to the uh, defense project. Once the, like, the Goal of the jungle of the defense budget, which is the geopolitical risk is reducing, or there will be a defense budget cut, and we will definitely uh, exit our investment. And on the other hand, if uh, to come in the later stage, and there will be a, um, a tragic variation, or also the company is trying to stop, we purchase their stock, and which also gives a signal on the stock price, maybe will be reduced in the later times. So for those signals, we will try. If the, uh, this signal happen, and we try to assist our portfolio. And we, otherwise, we have target our investment period for uh, one to three years. So this basically is the end of our presentation and also our sharing. And we are very free to welcome any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, guess I'm one. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie and Nelson. So again, this is uh, Wallace. Thank you for all of you for the introductions. Um, this is one of the key theme of uh, InvestWorks. Ordinary people working on professional, high-quality investment projects. They can do it. They just graduated from Chinese University like, how many months or three months? Two oh, months. You just got a certificate, right? <laughs> Um, if there are any interview invitation, please go ahead. And um, we believe that um, we can empower not just students and hopefully all potential masters and clients. Anyway, so it's time to open the floor for question and answers. And as you know, we have a lot of participants, friends now in this communication in this conference room. So we're going to let the friends ask questions first, and then we'll let those friends online to ask questions. So we have you know, dozens of friends already online listening on this um, presentation. And also, we're gonna post um, the video, the recorded video onto our YouTube channel. And we're gonna post our slides on Seeking Alpha as well, and Facebook and everything. Anyway, so uh, any questions from the floor today? Please, gentlemen. That's a mic passing back to you. Hopefully, this doesn't lead to an outbreak of war. 
Uh, but my question is, um, so in terms of the kind of stock um, selection, you're focused on North America, so North American companies. Um, uh, in terms of your universe, um, can you, you know, kind of run us through what you see in the rest of the world? Um, because if there's an arms race, it's not just going to, you know, benefit the U.S. side. Um, you know, perhaps, you know, in East Asia, um, there will also be demand. You know, what sort of uh, companies are you seeing in that? Uh, um, that's, that's emerging. Okay, so uh, I think it's important for us to start from uh, the international sales because uh, we know that uh, uh, I have to mention again for the top five countries for weapon export. Uh, the first one, US, and then Russia, China, and then the fourth and fifth will be Germany and France. So actually, we have identified one trend that uh, uh, China has actually have a very, very fast growth rate in terms of weapon exports. Uh, for China, the main customer would be about those uh, third world countries uh, or those uh, developing countries like Pakistan and Vietnam. And it has just engaged in a partnership agreement with 18 more African countries. So it makes China to climb from uh, safe, from the ranking of safe in like two or three years ago to uh, uh, to, not, uh, to, first, to, the first, to the first right now. And I believe that the key focus of China will lie on the satellite technology, uh, the submarine uh, the aircraft uh, carrier products, which kind of like a more capital intensive production. And so far we don't have uh, our exposure to uh, China stocks, but we uh, will definitely keep an eye to these uh, companies in the future. Any other questions from the floor today? As you didn't suggest to buy HSI for the first two times, so which makes you select this stock in coming September? HSI. Yeah. Uh, well, we believe that. Uh, we want to tr we tr uh, our philosophy is that we want to establish a, a stable portfolio first. And when we look at the performance of HII, it actually have a more sensitive return compared to, for example, Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. And it is mainly because uh, actually the proportion of, uh, of, of production of military products is actually much less than those in for Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. For example, uh, because HII is actually the only manufacturer for aircraft carrier in the US. Only HII is licensed uh, to produce aircraft carrier in the US. But it, uh, for other products, for example, 50% of this uh, net sales also come from the commercial side. They make commercial ships, and then they make commercial poles, like, uh, uh, or other, many other submarines. So we believe that that side of revenue will have a larger volatility in terms of net sales. And that's why uh, we want to pick up, uh, we want to have a longer observation period before we actually uh, invest our money, invest our capital into this company. And uh, the, the results show that uh, our analysis regarding, because in FY2018, the US government actually announced to make one new uh, aircraft carrier. And you know, making one uh, aircraft carrier takes very, very long time, like 10 to 12 years. And it will definitely be a very, uh, stable or steady revenue source for HII. And the uh, past uh, performance of HII in the past two months also suggests that uh, uh, our, our analysis is true. So, and that's why it's the reason why we're planning to uh, make another buy for HII in the coming months. Thank you. Questions on the floor? Uh, thank you for your presentation. I like it. Um, so how would you compare um, to gold or yen when things like the bad things happen on the floor? Is it because they have dividend uh, uh, return uh, better than gold? And what, what, what's the point of that? Uh, I believe that compared to buying commodities, uh, equity, I mean, in terms of asset class, it still have a, a larger volatility compared to commodities. 
and people usually think that uh, uh, the capital will move to gold or maybe other uh, commodities when uh, when there is a very light vision of what will break out. Uh, but we believe that uh, this may also contribute to another good reason for us to buy equity, uh, especially for the defense sector. Because when we look at the, like for example, the, uh, the stock price performance of the Lockheed Martin, it's, it's, like a, it's just like a very positive median trend or curve for, for uh, Lockheed Martin stock price. Well, for the gold price, it's, uh, it's more like volatile, unless, for example, when the volatility or when, uh, when RIA is increasing a lot. So uh, actually for Lockheed Martin, the stock price, uh, I, uh, the stock price in 2013 is just $100. And right now it's almost uh, approaching uh, 310. So we believe that this um, stable nature, uh, in terms of its diversified from the mix, in terms of the uh, uh, of its uh, sensitivity to systematic risk, really give us the confidence to invest in this uh, equity. Thank you. Yeah, and also I would like to add the context. Our base case analysis only assumes that the ball will not break down. So we didn't, even in the best case or even in the worst case, we didn't assume that it will break down. So based on this assumption, we have made our analysis and we can see that uh, those are uh, PE or even uh, the stock price will rise in the future. So question. Hi, I've got a question. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I see that your stocks is largely determined by defensive spending by governments. Um, not saying that they will change anytime soon, but if they do, how are you going to react to it? To, to your portfolio. Yeah, uh, uh, we have a we have a great discussion about this trend before, and usually we can see a big difference for different political parties in the U.S. For example, during the period when uh, Dem Democrats rule the government, uh, they tend to put more resources in terms of uh, social welfare and education and many other types of expense. But for the time for Republicans. They tend to reallocate more resources back to national defense. So we believe that this trend, uh, to evaluate this trend, it's important to understand uh, how the political cycle runs. And we believe that under the Trump administration, uh, uh, we believe that his, uh, his, uh, his uh, style is, is very likely to, uh, we have confidence in his style that he's very likely to break uh, uh, the defense budget. And also to get, we also need to consider the facts for some, uh, for, some for their for U.S. weapons. For example, um, U.S. currently have like around 18 aircraft carriers, and many of them are going to be expired in one or two years. So, given the hard fact that uh, they're capital-intensive products, they need a lot of repair and management expense. Uh, we can have larger confidence to forecast that the defense budget is very likely to rise in, uh, for example, during the term and under the term administration. Yeah, and also if there is some changes uh, in the procurement breakdown, and also we would like to uh, keep a closer eye on it and also to be at this one constructively. But if the government is trying to put more focus on the green and we, we try to put our focus on GII and GT, we uh, which are the those are main contractor in producing the green and also if there will be more focus on the aircraft or attack our fighter then we will put our focus on the craft margin so we will react our correspondence in our data set. I think uh, there are questions sorry um we have questions from the online forum can we uh, go through two more questions from Florin first and then we come back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a question from Xavier. Uh, you mentioned about three events of investment risk. How likely will it shift to the worst case of the investment? Yeah, we have mentioned uh, two cases uh, of the investment risk. And for those two cases, actually we don't, uh, we don't think that it's likely to happen or uh, the, impact, the impact of those uh, risks is relatively uh, low. Like for the bunch, I mean, actually, maybe uh, it can definitely uh, drop the excess price of the uh, those stock, but actually, you can see uh, the base of those stock is relatively low. So uh, it's uh, uh, less likely to like with the systematic risk. So even the stock price drop, 
and maybe those two stock will not drop and a large uh, percentage. And also for the engagement of the US president. And um, actually because uh, the procedure of the engagement is quite complicated and the impact of this impact is quite large. So we don't think that the US government or the US people will try to uh, really impeach uh, the US president and will give rise to the uh, maybe the worst case of our staff analysis. So based on this uh, likelihood or even the expression we have, so we don't think that uh, it may really will drive to the worst case of our investment strategies. Okay, uh, thank you for your answer, I guess. Um, um, another question from Mandy. Um, you mentioned about the top five national defense companies. Are there any reason that you do not consider buying UTX in any of the three investments? No, because uh, UTS actually uh, is not uh, heavy. Uh, for his uh, revenue portfolio, we did not see a maybe major product mix of the defense uh, defense ribbon producers. As I uh, said, maybe a large percentage of his revenue is uh, related to the commercial sales. So we didn't see a quite um, attractive portfolio to uh, invest in this stock uh, with our like the conservative strategies. Just a little bit to add on. For uh, UTX, uh, the military production actually only accounts for 5% of the total defense sales. So definitely under our analysis, we see uh, the sensitivity of uh, to defense budget to the product uh, driver. Uh, we believe that UTX is not so beneficial to uh, the performance of uh, the US budget rise or uh, the growth of any, uh, any particular products. And that's why we, we say similar to HII, we choose to delay our investment and wait for a longer observation period to see whether our analysis on the sensitivity of this commercial price is true. And it turned out that actually uh, UTX is not doing so good this summer. It uh, is underperformed compared to the market. And uh, yeah, we believe that we made the decision at that time. There's a question from the floor. Yes. Um, well, very well done tonight, and also congratulations on graduating. <laughs> totally awesome. So, uh, but I actually wanted to piggyback on the first gentleman's question in terms of um, developing global countries and their stark interest into the uh, arms trade agreements. Um, what would be, I know you focused on the United States, and I think that their weapons technology has been proven in the field, per se, and, and despite the Western European countries, the UK, France, Germany, what is the quality of the weapons and the weapons technologies of those other um, defense contracts and things like that that you guys were speaking about? What is the quality of their weaponry, their technology versus that of the Western countries that have traditionally dominated the market in this country? Unfortunately, proven by the uh, I would like to, for example, compare US with another low cost weapon producing countries, for example, like Asia and China. And uh, like in terms of anti missile defense system, uh, we know that uh, US had its FAT and PC3, and for Africa, they also export many anti missile systems. And one particular uh, product would, is called juggling, juggling missiles. And uh, this is the most, uh, most uh, this is the biggest product that has been exported. And it's the biggest uh, anti missile defense system selling to other countries after the US. And about the capability of, or the quality of these products, um, juggling missile actually can only be able to hit the tank or, uh, or for some uh, low level flying objects. Well, compared to other defense uh, uh, missile systems like FAT and PAD3, they are more uh, targeting a very high level of missiles, like those uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles that uh, go through across the atmosphere and then drop that. And when they, uh, after almost the end of the projectile, uh, the threat missile will use its positioning system to launch an interceptor and simply use uh, kinetic energy to intercept the target. So uh, we believe that the key difference of a uh, uh, key technological difference between U.S. and other, for example, low-cost uh, countries is that uh, uh, 
uh, you guys actually provide more integrated defense system compared to other countries. Like for example, as group, uh, it's good at making uh, juggling missiles, but it does not indicate that it's good at making uh, very uh, high quality aircraft or else. But for uh, uh, US weapon, you can just uh, simply accompany, for example, the anti missile system by its uh, GPS system. So uh, actually, uh, Lockheed Martin is also responsible for making a satellite which, uh, which is used to track the missiles. And uh, I think this kind of interaction actually increased a lot of uh, product quality in terms of accuracy, in terms of uh, identifying uh, the enemy's uh, weapons, object, and many others. So uh, I believe that uh, this is a real reason why uh, the US weapons uh, is really good with compared to others. I want to add on a point that uh, facing the uh, current geopolitical risk, you can see uh, maybe the defensive uh, system would be the main focus to uh, like to fight against with the North Korea. So for the US uh, defense uh, system, we can see like the TED and also the PAC has a higher accuracy compared to the other groups. Like since 2005, and the successful rate for the uh, TED is about is 100%. And also the PAC is the first missile that can successfully intercept the other missiles in the war. So this, I think, the other countries uh, cannot do a such a higher accuracy rate in, for their weapon system. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I think. Um, oh, one more questions. Okay. Maybe the last question from the gentleman here. Yes, for the presentation. Um, as typical, the material of the finance uh, towards the investment can be divided into three parts, which is the macro sector and single stock fundamental. So from your presentation, uh, how, how is the weighting of the alpha seeking? Because I'm not ETF have been investing heavily in those um, big market cap stock. So where is the alpha? <coughs> the alpha comes from macro or from the mispricing mis exploration from from your better view in macro or better view in sector or better view in a single stock analysis? Uh, uh, we basically measure the alpha uh, using a more generic scenario. We did, we did not uh, divide and into any of the center industry of fundamental stocks. And uh, well, we, we, our theme of our uh, investment is that we want, we want to try to uh, follow the trend of uh, those US stocks. Uh, under rising geopolitical risk, and uh, yeah, this is our main focus of uh, investment. 